Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper, Trader, Guide, Scout, and Interpreter, and Country Cook, Steve Hall here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with pretty Miss Sheila behind the camera, running that camera, doing a great job. Hi, Sheila. Hi. I just got back from the lake, and in this pan right here, I got 10 nice bluegill. Now, I want to have you come over here with the camera, and I'm going to explain a few different processes of what I'm going to do. But first thing I did is I went out to Bass Pro, and I bought me a pair of these little steel, let me see what they say, steel reinforced fillet gloves. So if you're cutting or scaling to do something, you won't nick yourself, because this actually has metal in it to keep you from cutting yourself. But come on over here. We're going to do bluegills the old-fashioned way. We're going to fry them in a cast iron skillet. We're going to bread them up. But let's show you what most people did when they first started fishing. All right, let me tell you what we're doing. We've got three different weapons here. We got our handy dandy little electric fillet knife. We got a spoon. And then I've just got a folding, actually a locking knife, because I want the blade to lock out if I'm scaling. Now, some people scale with a fillet knife, and that's really not a safe thing to do because it's kind of springy and it, you need something solid, like a good solid, almost like a hunting knife would do great, and some people scale with a spoon. So we're going to try it, but first let me show you flaying process, which folks do. Once you've been fishing for a while, you're going to flay out your bluegill, you're going to flay out the, the uh, rib cage here, and then you're going to have boneless fillets. That's all fine and dandy, but you're losing so much flavor. Let me go ahead and toss these back here. I'll get to them in a second. We're going to scale this, and let's see what is easier. And I, and I only use one of those two gloves that I bought from Bass Pro because I like to hang on to what I'm doing over here. This is the hand that's in danger anyway. I like to smash the fins in on both sides so I can really hang on to it. And some people scale with a spoon. See, and I'm used to using like a hunting knife. That works good for me. Just kind of like the, the round part of the tip there. Don't forget the little piece right there. Scale way up past the fin plate up on here because we're going to get that meat. I like scaling with a hunting knife. A lot of folks use a spoon, and that's fine. Whatever works for you so you can get this scaled. And then once we get this scaled like this, in the old days, we didn't know anything about fillet knives. They never even had any fillet knives that I remember. And we used to scale our bluegills. And then don't cut straight like this because you're losing this meat up here on the shoulders up over the top of the gill plate. So kind of come in at an angle. Remember, we scaled all the way up here. Go over until you get to the bluegill part of it. Then turn and come down so your fillet or your whole scaled fish should look like this, over then down, because we want this meat up here on the top. Then you just cut out the belly until you get to the, the little butthole back there. Take your thumb, pull out the guts, and it's finished. Rinse that out with real cold water, put it in the refrigerator in a bowl of ice water, which we're going to do here, with a little bit of salt for just a few hours, and then we're ready to cook. So I'm going to scale the rest of these, and we'll be right back. That's the process. All right, before we go any further, I want to take a moment to thank Sheila for letting me scale in the house. But I wanted to stop right here, because I'm not done with all of them, but I wanted to show you one other option. If you do want to fillet it out so you have a fillet instead of the whole fish like this, especially if you got kids that don't want to pick through the bones. But I love picking through the bones and the fins fry up like bacon. I'll show all of that to you when we're cooking it. Scale one. You can do the same thing with your crappies. Scale them. Then cut this down. And you know when you normally get to this point right here, you flip it over and flay it off. Don't do that. Cut it right on off. Now you've got a fillet that has the skin on, all scaled, 
ready to fry. Of course, we've got to take the rib cage out of here as well. But man, you talk about flavor in that filet with the skin on that's all scaled. Try it with your bluegill and your crappie. So I'm going to do a couple of them that way and a couple of them, the rest of them I should say, this way. And we're going to fry both of them up. See you in a little bit. All right. I kind of like to scale all of them at once. Then I can do all the head chopping at one time. Then I get my right hand dirty just once from the guts. But I'm telling you, it's well worth it. I used to have, it got lost somewhere in one of the moves, an electric scaler. It had a little electric motor that hung up over your head in the fish cleaning house. And a cable came down and it had a little tumbler with a cover. They make one that's electric that's actually in a handheld. Never tried it, so I can't tell you if I like it or not. But that one that was hanging down from the ceiling, man, it just like butter. Flip it over, scales just zinged right off of that thing. So if you see one that's got a motor and a long cable about this long and a little handheld thing on the end, they work fabulous. I don't know what brand it is, but let me cut all these through the bung hole at one time. Then I can get my right hand dirty once. All right. And again, there's a little pocket right here, kind of a membrane. Put your thumb on top of that and you can pull out the liver, all the entrails or whatever they say, all the goodies. Fantastic. You don't have to watch any more of this. Let me get these cleaned up and rinsed up and I'll be right back. Well, we have successfully covered everything with scales. <laughs> I should have did this outside. I know, Sheila, but I wanted to do it for the folks that watch us on YouTube. Man, we got this all done. Get yourself an electric fillet knife. Get yourself a hunting knife or a spoon. Don't use a fillet knife, a standard non-electric fillet knife to try to scale with. But come on over here, and I'm going to show you what we have on this platter here. Well, I wanted to give you three different options. This is just regular bluegill fillets. If you fillet it out completely, take the skin off and bones out. This is skin on bluegill, which is scaled. You can do the same process with crappie. Don't forget that because it's so good. If you do insist on filleting it out and taking out the rib cage, at least try a few of them scaled so you can taste them with the skin on. Then this is the whole bluegill with just the head cut off and the guts taken out back to the anal part here. And here's the neat part. You notice on my uh, bluegill fillets that this front shoulder is still here. I don't just chop them off behind the gill plate. I kind of cut in and then go around because I want all this meat that's up front here. So another little tip you can do. You can take your fillet knife and you can cut scores in here. It's called scoring. Just down to the backbone. Don't cut through. Only takes a second. And what that does is that allows the hot grease to get in there and cook it even better. And if some of your breading gets down in through those cracks. So I'm going to score them all up. I'm going to put them in a glass bowl. I'm going to put some salt water in there and put it just a little bit of salt. Put it in the refrigerator for a few hours, maybe overnight. And then we're going to cook this up and show you what the next step is. I can't wait to eat whole bluegills the old-fashioned way. See you in a bit. All right, it's time to cook the bluegills. They've been in the refrigerator in some cold water with about a teaspoon of salt in there. Now, when I do catfish and stuff like that, I'll put in a little bit of milk or maybe buttermilk or something with it, but you don't need it with bluegill, crappie, perch. They are so sweet the way they are. I got my good old cast iron skillet here, which I've cooked 100 fish fries in, my fish breading, which is shotgun reds, catfish, and crappie breading mix, some paper towels, a little bit of tartar sauce, some bread, we're ready. I know you want to watch this, so come on over here. I love this little notch in this pan because it keeps my thermometer from rolling back and forth. She's just rolling on 360 degrees, which is just where I like it. 350 is okay, 375 is okay. It's up to you how you cook your fish. And I got canola oil in here. The reason I do that, it's kind of out of habit because when I get some guests over and we're feeding fish, if somebody's got a peanut allergy, I know a lot of people cook with peanut oil, but I just don't anymore. I just use canola oil. It's got a wonderful flavor. 
right there. We're just hitting 360. Now that we got the oil hot, we got our fish ready. This is a one-shot deal. Remember we flayed out some crappies, or a bluegill I should say, exactly like how you normally fillet them. So I'll put a couple of those little guys in there. These are the ones that have been filleted, no skin. Now we're going to put in a couple of flays that we filleted out, but we left the skin on and scaled them. I want to cook a couple of those for you. There's another one. Man, try that with your bluegill and crappie. Scale them, then fillet them like you normally do, but then don't do the final step of flaying them off the skin. Oh, and here comes the babies. I got a little bit of water in the bottom of my dish because I like to get the fillets and get the fish wet, shake off the excess water, and then put this in here. I'm going to get this breading up so you can see this because I like to push this down inside the little pocket. You know where we cut the belly open here? I hope this is on camera because Sheila's gone today. I'm doing this on my own. And I try to work the seasoning down into those little scores. Remember how we scored it? There we go. Tail on, fins on. This is heaven here, boys. Man, oh man, oh man. A lot of these recipes, when I get done with them, we give some to the neighbors. We give some to some people that can really use the food. We throw some in the freezer. That ain't happening today. When this recipe is over, I'm turning the camera off before I even edit it. And it's going on the plate. Get a couple of them babies in there. Let's do this. Let's fry these up first because I really want to show you the finished process of how you eat them. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but there's so many people out there that just don't master flaying, and they're so used to scaling their bluegills, chopping the heads off, and frying them up. I know they're loving this. So I'm going to turn these over in a second. We'll be right back. Boy, these are looking good. Had to go wash my hands off a little bit. Now these little fillets, they don't take very long. And you notice the ones with the skin on, they curl up. Because the skin pulls it around there. But I'm going to let these other guys lay here and really get golden brown on one side before I turn them. I got to tell you. I had so many aluminum pans that, you know, all the Teflon would chip off and then they would warp and roll around. I bought a cast iron pan here about, oh golly, about a year and a half ago now and I will never cook with anything else. I just threw all the rest of them old scratchy pots and pans away. It's cast iron for me. I love it. Now this little electric burner here for this kitchen preparation is not as hot as the one in the kitchen. When the one in the kitchen, I turn it wide open, and when it gets right up to temperature, I turn it to about 9, and then I just leave it there because I'm putting fish in, taking fish out, and I want the oil to stay hot. This little monster, I got it wide open and just struggling to stay at 350 and 360, so it might take another extra couple of minutes to do this. All right, I pulled the little fillets out of there, put them on the paper towel. And I gave these about another two or three minutes. I wish this burner was a little hotter, but it's getting her done. And in fact, I like to put the oil in, not really like it's deep frying, but so about a, oh, a fourth of the fillet or the fish is sticking out of there. Oh yeah, them are looking good. You can tell it's time to turn them when they start getting golden brown and the fins get stiff. And one thing you'll notice, you see all the little scoring? Where we scored them with the knife, man, they just open right up and they let the oil right down in there with your breading cook right down to the bone. So when these get golden brown, I'm going to pull them out of here and put them on the plate and let them cool. Well, I found a couple other little fillets I threw in alongside of them, but these are done. And remember, you always want to cook these a little longer than you do your normal fish fillets because it has to get clear down to the bone from both sides. Does that look good or what? Wow. Now I'm going to let these lay on here for just a second on these paper towels and cool down because I want to show you a little process that you can do. So we'll see you in a minute. Wow. 
Well, as long as I got the camera running, I don't care. I'm going to put some more of these bluegills in here. That little burner over there is fine for doing recipes out here on the counter, but I had to go in the kitchen, turn on the real stove, and finish these babies off. Now let me show you something. When you eat a bluegill, this is cool now, first thing you do is your brother's not here, so you eat the tail. Na 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 na. He's not here. So I get all of them. Oh, fantastic. And I even like these fins. You can pull this row of fins right out of the fish, right to the front. Eat that little crispy. Pull the fin out of the bottom. Right to the front. Eat that little crispy. Sorry if I'm smacking on camera, but you're going to have to deal with it today. Then all you do is just peel her open right down the middle. And the fish falls off both sides of that bone. And what you end up with is a bone that looks like them cats on the cartoons when they pull, you know, fish out of the garbage can. And I'm telling you, this stuff on both sides now is boneless with skin on, but the flavor coming off the side of these little rib cages and stuff is absolutely, I mean, I like to break these off like this and eat the meat off the little bones. As a kid, we learned to do all that. So let me show you what heaven looks like. Plate of bluegills. Stack of buttered bread on the side. Big tall glass of cold milk. This, my friends, is pure heaven. I can sit and eat half the lake full of these little rascals. And again, my brother's not here. So, when we were kids, we used to run around and eat all the tails off them. Who ate my tails? Sorry. Mm. That is absolutely fantastic. You have no idea. So this, my friends, is the end of this recipe because I'm turning the camera off and I'm going to enjoy these. You know the little filleted bluegills, they're delicious. The curled up filleted bluegill fillets with skin on scaled, they're even better. But this little guy right here, cut down around, clean out the pocket, fill him full of fish breading, score him on both sides. This is heaven. This is what it's all about. I'm sorry, but this brings me back to my childhood up in Iowa when we used to catch bluegills, and now I catch them out here at Elm Hill Marina. Fantastic. I hope you enjoyed our recipe. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Little Shotgun Red's face will pop up over here. I'll probably put some other fish recipe or something over on this side. But either way, Sheila's out shopping with her mom, which is a good thing because I get to eat a few of these. And we'll see you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. This is heaven.